In the years since that attack, in some of America's largest cities, hate crimes have surged. A reminder that there is still a lot of work ahead. Dion Lim from our ABC station in San Francisco, KGO, brings us this in-depth report. From New York City, punching her 125 times. And that lady, she bothers nobody. To the San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah, we're scared. Our community feeling um, a, a lot of fear and a lot of pain. One year after the Atlanta spa shooting, Asian Americans still feel under attack. Hey, no! We are tired, so tired of living in fear. The graphic and sickening incidents hard to watch. Just this week, a woman in New York beaten 125 times and all caught on camera. A recent study found nationally assaults against Asians went up a staggering 260% between 2020 and 2021. The NYPD alone finding a 360% increase in incidents among the boroughs. So we're seeing an increase in violence, an increase in serial attacks, and we're seeing a brazen face of this. This is a problem of historic proportions with regard to targeting of, of, of Asian Americans. Countless stories nationwide of Asians on the receiving end of verbal and physical assaults since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, simply because of their ethnicity. Asian piece of shit. Oh my right God. Now. Go back to whatever Asian country you belong in. These are just some of the gruesome reminders a woman has from last Sunday night. Following Lee into her apartment in Manhattan's Lower East Side before fatally stabbing her. Another man knocked to the ground in broad daylight. He had to go back to the hospital because his left eye wouldn't stop bleeding. The senseless death of 84-year-old Thai immigrant Vishar Ratanakpakti. So many of our elders being violently attacked. I'm at the point where I can't take it anymore. Our elected officials need to act. 2022 is the year of the tiger, a symbol associated with bravery and courage. And long after the pomp and celebration of the largest Lunar New Year parade outside of Asia, a community that is still suffering, searching for the courage to carry on as many say their grievances are falling on deaf ears. What's it feel like being back? I feel like I'm reliving the whole thing, re-experiencing the whole thing, being re-traumatized, and it's not a good feeling. 69-year-old Ayn Lay takes us to the place where he was beaten with a bat and verbally assaulted in broad daylight by a boy and his father. He suddenly started hitting me very hard, repeatedly, brutally, and it hurt like hell. Lay's perpetrators were arrested that very day. 85-year-old Rong Xin Liao was also brutally attacked in broad daylight, kicked out of his seated walker while waiting for a city bus to show up. <laughs> Liao needed seven stitches and suffered brain bleeding that required holes drilled into his head to make a full recovery. He alleges San Francisco's DA did not properly communicate with him after filing charges against his attacker. Liao and Lei are not alone. There's been an alarming surge of xenophobic attacks against Asian Americans in the Bay Area and across the country. San Francisco police report a whopping 567% increase of hate crimes against Asians in the past year. We will do everything we can to make those arrest to hold perpetrators accountable. Community leader Russell Jung says it's clear. Yeah. Uh -huh. Asians of all different backgrounds continue to be blamed through stereotypes peddled uh -huh. by the previous presidential administration. China flu, the China virus, the plague from China, we have to be accurate. Sadly, Dion, the, the hate continues. I think, as we said, it's sort of, uh, the hate's been normalized with President Trump's rhetoric. He sort of opened Pandora's box that it's okay to mock and then uh, to attack Asians. It's been more than a year since Trump left office, and yet the number of attacks only continue to escalate. Even when the president was leaving office, the stereotypes and the language that was used remained within the socio-political discourse. The template is already laid out on various strata of social media, and in certain reservoirs of grievance, 
that become cultural, not just political. Many victims of these assaults remain afraid to speak out. What are the reasons for the underreporting or being afraid to? If you can't speak English, if you can't report in English, if people are just getting yelled at, if people are getting spat upon, what can police do? They don't report um, just because there's no mechanism to hold people accountable. Jung's nonprofit Stop AAPI Hate is working to effectively address anti-Asian racism in the United States. Their online reporting center has tracked more than 10,000 hate incidents in an 18-month period, an eye-popping number that could be even higher and has celebrities demanding action and pushing for change. We are united and we are waking up. I want us to get back to where Everyone feels safe and, um, you know, the walls of racism are, are broken down. For those victims who find the courage to speak out in this year of the tiger, a resolve to turn their pain into purpose. What do you hope will come out of you sharing your story? We as Asian Americans have too long been considered invisible. There will be some concrete changes, concrete changes. Clearly, change is necessary. Our thanks to Dion for that powerful report. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.